Hello, everybody. Welcome to another match in the Any% Percent League. Today, we have the illustrious D-Dangers and Equan. I am joined today by Cheese James. Uh, what are you thinking about this match? What are your uh, what are your pre pre match thoughts? Uh, I don't know. I think uh, Equan might have uh, the early game in the bag, though, for sure. Yes. Uh, uh, anyone who knows Equan knows that he has a particularly remarkable early game. In fact, his PB actually has uh, a 955 sand exit, which is the world record by quite a lot. So he he's definitely got a very good early game. Uh, however, late game possibly could be where D Dangers could take over because he's not as consistent at the late game as he is at the early game. Yeah, for sure. I know, uh, at least I'm pretty sure Aquan has been doing quite a bit of ILs of the early game as well. Yes, he has. And he has done quite a bit of late game practice. He's definitely way better at the late game than he was before. He actually holds the, uh, the Metro Kingdom IL records, Night Metro and Day Metro, uh, as long as along with the Wooded IL record. Uh, so he's definitely getting better at those at those uh, later matches or at those later kingdoms. All right. So starting out in Cap Kingdom here. Now, like we said. Uh, Equan definitely has a lot of early game experience. Uh, he's very good at this early game, and that will probably show here. As you'll see, he's going for he'll be going for a lot of strats in the early game, particularly in Sand Kingdom, which we will see soon. But for these first two kingdoms, Dangers and Equan will basically be going through it, uh, pretty much doing the same stuff. There might be little things here and there, but they're basically just going to be doing the same things for uh, these first two kingdoms. Alright, so here's actually uh, a cool little strat that they both did there. Um, they jumped on that lower platform and then in a motion control jump up to the higher platform. And that's just a little optimization that saves very little time, but it's not that hard, so most, uh, a f quite a few runners just decide to go for it. Also, Danger struggled a little bit there on the left side, but that's not a huge deal. And, uh, looks like Equine was struggling on getting the hit on Topper's head. So maybe they're about even now. Maybe Equine has about a second or two lead. Yeah, so it looks like Ekwon is exiting cap at around 223. Dangers following not far behind. Yeah, so it looks like a 226, a low 226 for Dangers. All right, so now headed into Cascade and we're gonna see the first uh, major trick of this game. Uh, other than left side, uh, this is the one of the huge time-saving tricks in the run. This is first moon skip. You'll see then. Normally, there's an invisible wall there that prevents you from getting up here unless you collect the first moon. However, there's a little gap in the invisible wall that you can just barely slide under, as you saw both of them do. And now they're going to both capture this dino and jump on this uh, trampoline here to get up to this uh, boss fight and skip climbing the mountain. Now they're just going to be uh, knocking off the chain chomp cat with Cappy and then throwing Cappy a second time to immediately capture the chain chomp. Yeah. So they're basically throwing their hat out here, backflipping to stop the chain chomp, and then their hat hits the chain chomp to get its hat off, and then they're throwing it immediately to capture it. So it's like just another optimization. And that's one thing you'll notice throughout the whole game, but particularly in the early game, is it's just it's really optimized. We've really basically found all these really fast ways to get, get all these boss fights and stuff down, and you'll particularly see that in the early game. Very optimized. 
Although, optimally, I think we only do, two, uh, yeah, two boss fights in the early game. If you count Cap through what an early game, we've just eliminated almost every boss fight at this point. Yeah, it's true. We Basically, every boss fight that is possible to skip in this game, we're skipping, with the exception of a few. Uh, basically, uh, at this point, at this level of optimization in the game, oh no! Danger's actually taking a bunk there. That's not a huge deal, though. You can climb up there quickly. So we see Equan doing the chest clip there, and pretty interesting is uh, he went for the fast version of chest clip. Oh no, Danger's missing chest clip, but he'll be able to quickly recover. Alright, unfortunately not the cleanest cascade for Danger's, but it's not a huge deal in this early game. We're actually going to be seeing... Uh, Equan probably gonna go for a pretty hard strat here. I'm not sure if he's gonna go for it in a race, but I think he will. He's been doing it a lot and he's pretty consistent at it, so we'll see that in a second here. It's a little route change in sand. Alright, so headed into Sand here, and like I mentioned, there is a route change in Sand Kingdom that we will probably be seeing Equan go for here. He has been doing it in his runs, and he's pretty consistent at it, but I'm not actually sure if he goes for it in his races or not. He might opt to not go for it due to just the fact that it's very difficult to pull off. So we'll see. And yeah, it actually does look like he's not going to be opting to do it. So, probably a smart move on his part. Like I mentioned, it's actually a really difficult route to pull off. So, probably a smart move there, that he's not going to be going for it. But even without it, he still can get very good early games. The route, uh, basically what it is, is it's skipping that pipe that he just went into there. Uh, in favor of getting a crate moon a little bit later in the route. A crate moon that we used to skip, but recently it's been added back into the route uh, in a route known as Late Crate. Oh, Ekwon struggling a little bit with his ice pillar here. But backed up pretty well. Yeah, dan ooh, if Dangerous can get this ice pillar jump, he's gonna make up a little bit yeah. of time here on Ekwon. So yeah, like I was saying, that, that new route, it only saves about 3 or 4 seconds. I say about 3 or 4 seconds, in reality, 3 or 4 seconds is quite a lot, but for a race, it's not that notable. So he can definitely get away with skipping out on it here, especially if Dangerous isn't going for it either. Alright, so now headed up to Sphinx Clip here, and similarly to First Moon Skip, which we saw in the Last Kingdom, this is one of three tricks in the game that is 1.0 exclusive. It can only be done on 1.0, and a Sphinx Clip can be done on version 1.1 as well. Uh, but between 1.0 and 1.2, Sphinx Clip and First Moon Skip are both exclusive to 1.0. And we actually see him doing the double clip variant of this. I think. Yeah, that... yeah, yeah. I'm going to clip back in there, unfortunately. And that's that's one of the risks of doing. And we see Danger struggling quite a bit here with uh, his double clip movement as well. Because uh, the reason double clip is so is particularly risky to go for is because. Um, Basically, every time you go into a loading zone, into that Sphinx loading zone, and then leave, the bird cycle gets reset. So, uh, when you do double clip, the bird cycle is extremely tight. So, missing Sphinx clip like that, like Dangerous did, or or clipping back in like Equan did, can actually make this bird cycle oh, quite no. tough. Oh no! 
That is probably the most costly mistake you can make in sand right there. Yeah, that is... Wait, a Miss Jackie skip, that's huge. So, yeah, basically... <laughs> what, uh, yeah, that's probably the biggest mistake you can make in Sand Kingdom. And then, the unfortunate part is this trick isn't even very hard either. It's probably one of the easiest tricks in the run, so it's always just super unfortunate whenever you do miss it. So, all right, we'll see. So yeah, that's really unfortunate that he missed that. So that's definitely going to be a huge uh, thing that Equan will have to take advantage of here. And another thing that we'll notice is due to his death in Jaxi Skip, this bird cycle is actually very awkward. You see it all the way up there. He's gonna have to do some weird stuff here. So Equan already making his way into uh, Lake Kingdom as Dangerous finishing up the Sand Kingdom here. Really unfortunate. Thing there, but it is still very early on in the run, so uh, there is a lot of stuff that can happen, especially in uh, these kingdoms coming up here with Lake Clip and Nut Clip. A lot of definitely a lot of potential to for spaghetti on Equan's part, so we'll see. But that definitely is extremely unfortunate for Day Dangers. All right, so starting out Lake, uh, for the first part of this, it's just the same as the beginner's route, but we'll see uh, Ekwon do some pretty fancy stuff here. So basically, in the corner of this wall, there's a little, little seam in the wall, like a little tiny gap that you can throw your hat through. And if you line up right, oh no. All right, that's not that big of a deal though. Just has to reline up, throw his hat through this, and there he goes. So basically, you can just clip through there and do some pretty tricky out-of-bounds movement and throw your hat up to grab that checkpoint flag. So now what he's going to do is uh, get this moon down here and warp back up here. So what doing this route does is it, it's able to give you enough extra moons to where you can skip the boss fight of this stage. And it saves about six seconds. Uh, realistically but since he obviously had that little mishap with it uh probably not gonna be saving much time with it and we'll actually see dangers going for it as well and dangers definitely having a cleaner clip than equon allowing him to make up some more time on him so yeah i always I think it's really interesting because before, not long ago, uh, Lake Clip was considered a uh, a BTT only trick. Not no one was going for it. It was considered way too hard to go for in an actual route, but or in an actual run. But uh, Nick was the first one to actually start implementing it, and he realized that it's actually not that terrible if you practice it a lot. You can actually get it really consistently. So at this level of optimization, uh, top runners are basically forced to go for it at this point. So Ekwon is just finishing up Lake Kingdom here. Going to be headed into Wooded, which is definitely one of the harder kingdoms in this, in this game. Yeah, Danger's taking a bonk there. Not a huge deal. I'd be All interested right. to see if uh, Equan messes up not clip here. That, that might be able to sh might be enough to shift the lead or come close to it. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah, like I was saying, even though that was a very unfortunate. Uh, Jaxi skipped death. Uh, 
these other early game kingdoms can definitely shift the lead here because they are very difficult. And like you mentioned, missing Nut Clip would definitely be something that would uh, set Equan back quite a bit and allow Dangerous to uh, make up a lot of this time here that he's lost. Another interesting thing is that uh, Equan actually does hold the world record for uh, Wooded Kingdom. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We're going to see here going here for this new route. Well, new in quotation marks because it's it's fairly old at this point, but it's it's relatively new in terms of the game's lifespan. So basically, he's going to be going up this tree and getting this tree nut moon. And what this allows him to do is skip the Piranha Plant Story Moon later in the kingdom. And it saves about two seconds, done uh, optimally. That looks like a good nut clip. Yeah. So he's got the clip, but it's not over yet, because this out of bounds movement is also very difficult, as it's demonstrating now. But he's able to recover. If he were to fall there and fall back in bounds, or forbid fall into the deep woods, that would be a very huge setback. So luckily that didn't happen. And Danger is getting the clip as well. Nice to see. So we actually did see the route difference there. Danger is not going for the tree moon. Is going to be doing the uh, story moon. Ooh. Dangerous failing the ramp. The what do you call this? The ramp jump. Yeah, yeah. This actually, this actually, a lot of runners just kind of gloss over this because they've done it so many times. But it's actually pretty tricky to get that ramp climb there and the jump at the end. So yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. So we'll now see Ekwon skipping this Piranha Plant Moon here and just going straight over to uh, FRS. And another thing that we'll see here in Ooh, Danger's taking damage there. What he tried to do there was buffer a jump on that poison, uh, which would allow him to not take damage on it because he'd be jumping on the same frame that Mario lands on it, so the game wouldn't register him taking damage. But he unfortunately uh, failed that there. And taking damage in this game is pretty costly because it's not only the time loss from taking damage itself, but it's also time loss from... Uh, grabbing a moon and having that little health refill animation. And we now see Ekwon jumping down here and getting these extra moons. And the reason he's doing this is because he is skipping that boss fight at the top and what he's doing here may look really slow, but uh, the multi-moon cutscene uh, at, after fighting a boss fight is very long. So in reality, he's actually saving oh, no! No! Danger's taking a death here on the FRS movement. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, Wooded can be brutal. Oh. Equan messing up pipes here, though. This will definitely mess up his cycle. This is a cycle-based room. So he's definitely going to be having to do some smart maneuvers of the spinies here. And he's having some trouble. Oh no! Ekwon taking a death in Pipeway. That is really the most... That's the really the hardest thing about this Pipes room. It's not per, It's not difficult as long as you're able to make the cycle. But these mistakes, like he's making again here, can really throw off the uh, cycle of the room and make it very hard to maneuver around these uh, little spiny guys. And it's just really unfortunate to see that. But that death is definitely going to allow Dangers to make up for that uh, FRS death that he had. Yeah, both of these runners are, are kind of all over the place with this wooded. Yeah.
what it definitely is very brutal and that this race is a very clear indicator of that. Yeah, but what it is definitely definitely has the most hard strats in, I would say. There's yeah. just so many different strats. If you want to get like a good time for Wooded, there's just so much you got to go for, and it's so hard to nail everything in one go. Yeah, battle. for sure. It's definitely that you can definitely say it's the hard. It, you can definitely make the argument that it's the hardest kingdom in this game, and that it has like some of the hardest strats in it. It is a very difficult kingdom, and this race perfectly illustrates that. So now making their way into Cloud here. And I don't want to jinx anything, but this could be a breather kingdom for them after that those uh, wooded kingdom fails. Oh no. Looks geez. I don't know why I say anything. Alright. Okay. <laughs> Echo getting a pretty cool backup there. Yeah. I guess moral of the story is just don't say anything. <laughs> So yeah, basically what he was trying to do there was uh, run up and grab the hat as soon as Bowser throws it. So you're basically throwing your hat at the same time Bowser throws his hat. And that allows you to uh, grab the hat as soon as, he, as soon as it becomes grabbable, basically. But he got an up throw there. He must have been shaking a little bit too hard. So the game registered an up throw. Pretty unfortunate. So if Dangerous can have a good Cloud Kingdom, then uh, that can be some more uh, lead that he can make up here. All right, first hit is good. And another thing that you'll see him doing there is after he grabbed the hat, he dove behind Bowser there. And uh, the reason he's doing that is because Bowser will always jump to the platform directly across the one that you are standing on. So by manip by diving behind him and hitting him, you're manipulating how many spaces he jumps. So you can make him jump one space only instead of two or three. And that saves about a second over the entire fight. So Danger's definitely having a much cleaner Cloud Kingdom than Ekwon. All right, now we see Aquan making his way through the Lost Kingdom. Something I kind of glossed over there was that he uh, did that uh, jump there off the tree and onto that cliff. And the reason he's doing that is because he wants to avoid this trigger, this klepto trigger. This bird, klepto, in this kingdom will steal your hat once you make it a certain amount in the kingdom. And that's a very huge time loss takes a long time to get Cappy back. So by doing this, we're essentially skipping that trigger. A pretty fancy strat there from Ekwon. He did a spin throw to get that trapedal to grab his hat and then doing this cage triple jump. And that is... Oh no! Okay, okay so... That's only, yeah, that's only a little, that's not a huge time loss, yeah, that's fortunately. Only like, yeah, that's only like two seconds or so. Yeah, because he respawns right at the Odyssey. But what he was trying to do there, the reason he didn't up throw is that's like a tiny optimization. By up throwing there instead of throwing your hat, you just uh, are able to get out of there quicker. You're able to bounce off your hat quicker. And it's a very small optimization, but I suppose it does matter a lot in a game like this, but... It did backfire there, unfortunately. But luckily, like we mentioned, and that's that's not a huge death. That's probably one of the least least costly deaths you can have in the whole game, if not the least costly. And dangers getting this last moon. Finishing up Lost, and both runners having pretty decent loss, no major mistakes, which is definitely something that can happen in Lost, one of the harder kingdoms, so thankfully uh, there was no huge mistakes to either runner. Ooh, speaking of huge mistakes. Yeah. 
So basically, he tried to he tried to wall jump there, but he Mario wasn't grabbed onto the wall yet. So when he pressed A, uh, to wall jump, uh, it just gave him a rainbow spin, which can happen. And dangerous, making his way into Night Metro as well. And I've noticed over these past few kingdoms, lost uh, Cloud, and now Night Metro maybe. Uh, is danger slowly making up this time and as I say that Ekmo I'm going for a really cool strat here This is a strat that was found by a uh, Goryuya, and it's basically a faster way to climb this uh, This interior of New Donk City Hall uh, It's like about a second faster and it looks really cool. Yeah, it's super flashy Definitely one of yeah. the more flashy strats in the entire run Yeah, for sure And now making his, Ekwon is making his way into Wiggler, which is uh, one of the only uh, things in this entire game that has RNG elements to it. For the most part, this game is very consistent, uh, not based barely any RNG, but this is one of the more notable uh, instances of it. You can lose multiple seconds on this fight just to RNG, which is uh, something that is not usually in this game. So, the goal here for the second cycle, the second cycle is the one that's random. And the goal here is to hopefully get a good pattern so that you can hit all these quickly and uh, finish him off in only two cycles as opposed to having to wait three cycles, which he was able to do there. And Danger's making his way into the Wiggler fight as well. So, I guess right now they're about a Wiggler fight apart. Yeah, I definitely think Dane just made up some ground on Echoan in the past couple kingdoms there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Alright, so now Echoan entering Day Metro, and like I mentioned earlier, he does have the best Day Metro IL. So let's see if he can play up to that. as Dangers does the second phase of Wiggler. And it looks like Dangers actually got a very nice pattern. Yeah, that was an incredibly good pattern. He was able to finish that Wiggler off very fast. All right, let's see. All right, so Ekwon just did scoop clip there. You can utilize the motion controls of that scooter. Uh, if you tilt your controller far enough, you can just barely tilt Mario far enough to where he can grab the moon inside that cage. And now Danger's entering Day Metro as well. And something I didn't mention when Ekwon did it, is he's doing a capture warp here. He's basically throwing his hat in front of that wire, and then grabbing this moon, and then shaking right before he grabs the moon. So then, uh, as soon as the moon animation is done, he, is, uh, he captures the wire. Also having a very nice scoot clip. will be making his way to this final musician and uh, these musician moons although slow are unfortunately are basically our only options in metro there is a route that you can do to skip these musician moons and it is a little bit faster but it is also incredibly difficult so no runners are actually going for it at the moment 
it 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 basically involves you going and entering a building, a bullet a bill building, and grabbing the moons in there to skip these uh, musician moons. But like I said, it is incredibly difficult route to pull off. So no runners are going for it at the moment. So for now, we just have to deal with these really slow musician moves. Yeah, you got like another gear when we're just completely desperate for time given this when we'll see runners going for it. Yeah. I honestly, I don't doubt that runners will be going for it relatively soon. And there's actually recently a easier version of it, like a slight reroute and it involves Captain Toad. And it's, it's way easier and it still does save time over the old route so that's something interesting that uh runners should definitely look into and something uh dangerous just warped there and i didn't mention it when ekwon warped but usually when you warp for the first time in this game there's some text that pops up on the screen however that text was actually done in lake when, when the runners did lake clip so lake clip doesn't only save time in lake kingdom it actually also saves time in Metro, since if you didn't do Lake Clip, you'd be getting the uh, the warp text in this kingdom. And Ekwon finishing out Metro Kingdom. Still a sub-31. Or wait, actually... Not uh, wait, yeah, yeah, sub thirty one. So that's that's pretty impressive to still get a sub thirty one metro exit in a race, or even in general, it's just a solid time to exit metro. So despite the mistakes, still a pretty good run here from both runners. It looks like uh, Ekwon probably didn't have enough coins there, and he's opting to go to his head first instead of Snow. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a smart move. And actually, a really interesting uh, new quote-unquote strat, or route that was found. It was found a little while ago now, but uh, it's still relatively new. Uh, this will this is called Seaside Clip, and we'll be seeing it here. Uh, skipping the Notes Moon in favor of another moon that we get at the very end of the kingdom and yeah this saves like five seconds so it's actually a really big really big skip so we'll see oh, there's some weird <laughs> weird movement there from act one Probably a draft input, I'd, I'd assume. Yeah, I probably agree with that. So now, the, here's where the route change starts. Instead of going over to that Notes Moon, he is going straight over to capture this cheap cheap. And since Dangerous went to Snow first, it'll actually be kind of hard to tell exactly how far apart these runners are until they are entering Luncheon. So we do know that Ek1 is ahead of Dangers, but it'll be kind of hard to say exactly how much far ahead he is. So here's all these here's all these coins in this tunnel is the reason why you go to Seaside first if you're short on coins. There's a lot of coins here that you can grab in Seaside. So pretty soon we're going to be coming up on the seaside clip. After getting this moon. So it's actually a really interesting clip and I'm not sure exactly how it works. You basically go up to this invisible wall here and swim away from the cheap cheap, capture him again, and you're able to bypass that invisible wall. And I'm not sure exactly how it works there but it allows you to get out of bounds and come grab this moon from out of bounds with the fish's large hitbox and go into the Sphinx loading zone and grabbing another moon. And Ekwon pulling it off very well there. 
And it looks that Dangerous is having a pretty good snow right now as well. Yeah. Yeah, no mis no visible mistakes that I've seen from Danger Snow either. Other than a few little like movement things. But yeah, definitely a very good snow from Danger so far. And this is another kingdom similar to Metro with all these slow story moons that we're just forced to collect. And there's just no no way around it. Like there's not enough moons to go around before uh, getting peace in this kingdom. So we're just forced to grab these story moons and it's really slow, but there's just nothing you can do about it. All right, Danger actually, Danger's actually getting some pretty good RNG there. That's another little in instance of RNG is those Goomba placement. And Ekwon entering snow here. Oh, oh, oh no, no. Oh. Luckily you can back up this moon pretty easily in this room. Yeah. It's a long jump over the void here, but yeah. still a very unfortunate death. What I'm assuming happened there is just the ice physics kind of messing him up. That is very unfortunate. So I'm yeah, I'm assuming he messed up his triple jump and then the ice physics just kind of caused him to mess up his backup and dive off the edge. It's really unfortunate to see. But he is almost out of snow now. And although it does look like Dangers is ahead, Keep in mind, he still does have all of Seaside to do. So Ekwon is still ahead by a decent margin. And it's actually even more so after that uh, death. Mm. Ekwon actually tried to do a snow clip there with that moon. Yeah. He found it though. Luckily, it's not a big time loss if he found that. It's only like a second or two. Yeah. That's. The, there's three moon clips in this game. Or in this route, I should say. And as Dangerous gets a very nice snow dram there. There's three moon clips in this route, and the one in Cascade and Snow are not huge deals. They don't miss much. They don't lose much if you miss them. The one in Wooded, however, is the most important, because missing that uh, moon clip can lose anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds, depending on whether or not you decide to do rock clip as your backup. So yeah, luckily the, the moon clip in snow is not a huge deal to miss. Ekwon entering the Goomba room as well. Let's see if he gets good RNG. And no, it does not look like he got good RNG, unfortunately. However, that actually could have been worse. There is a possibility that that Goomba will actually walk off the edge and kill itself, which would cause you to have to either exit the room or uh, die and respawn in order to respawn the Goomba, which is a huge time loss. So fortunately that didn't happen. So Dangers just starting out Seaside here, and Ekwon just finishing up Snow. So I'd say at the current moment, probably about a two minute or so lead that Ekwon has uh, as a rough estimate. Yeah, Ekwon, Ekwon has... has... Yeah, oh, Ekwon sorry. Built up, yeah, Ekwon built up a huge lead over these past couple kingdoms here. Definitely just playing cleaner than Dangerous in general. Yeah. And there's definitely been some strengths and weaknesses from the runners. Like we said earlier, there were some kingdoms that Dangerous was able to make up a decent amount of time on Ekwon. But these other kingdoms, Ekwon has just been playing cleaner, which has allowed him to accumulate this lead. As well as get that successful Snowdram. Nice to see both runners getting Snowdram. And by the way, for anyone who doesn't know that Snowdram jump, basically, you are only supposed to get up there 
after you complete the game where a, like a painting appears there that you can go through and get up to that moon but you can get that very precise jump off the odyssey to get up there and grab the moon early all right we now see dangers doing the seaside clip as well he's successful on it the clip itself is actually uh, not too hard it's this grabbing this moon that can be tricky, but dangers does look like he got it with no issues The reason that can be tricky is because uh You can clip inside back and bounce, which is a huge time loss I'm right. going for that flashy spin throw to knock a weird hat there. Yeah. <laughs> so this is another boss in this game that is unfortunately not skippable or at least it's not skippable and be faster uh it's actually a really slow moon here and it's especially slow because normally with a boss fight like that you would get three moons for it uh, but you actually only get one moon for it here so it's an especially slow moon but you know just gotta live with it because there's not currently a faster way to skip it And here's one of Ekwon's signature strats here that he- oh, he kind of messed it up there. It's actually faster. Most runners, you'll see grab that- grab like a little fork in the wall and fling their way up. But Ekwon opts to hop on the mountain and then roll across it. And it is faster by a little bit. And that's one of Ekwon's signature strats there. As Dangers finishes up Spirit here, both runners having pretty clean luncheons, obviously Ekwon with that little slip up, but no major mistakes from either runner so far. Oh no. What Ekwon tried to do there was get a roll cancel off of that. Yeah, he unfortunately, basically what he was trying to do was roll cancel off of that thing and get a lot of speed and be able to make that fireball cycle so he was able to capture it right after he captured, right after he got the moon. Uh, but unfortunately he messed up his roll cancel and messed up that cycle. Uh, only losing about five seconds, so it's not a huge deal. Ekwon as well doing a really uh, fancy roll off that railing there. And Danger's continuing to have the clean luncheon. So now we will see Turnip Clip, which is the third 1.0 exclusive. Basically just set up this turnip next to the cage, put the pamper in between, capture him, pushes you into the cage, and that one pulled it off marvelously there. And Danger's also messed up this uh, cycle on this fireball. But like I said, not a huge time loss. So now, 
upon finishing up lunch in here. There actually is, uh, this, this last part can actually be pretty tricky. There's some small, uh, pieces of ground that you have to land on, and it's easy to fall down into the lava. Or the pink hot stuff, I don't know what that stuff is. But, he's able to do it. And he's done with luncheon. All right. Oh no! no! Dangerous missed him the turn up. I. I that is something. I... Yeah, that's I... something that can happen. He he just messed up the angle on his roll cancel. I think it. De it. I think it definitely Sorry. would be. Yeah, I think it definitely would be slower to go back and grab that turn up there, but. Yeah, yeah. probably. But then again, the cheese block. Uh, breaking the cheese blocks and grabbing the le lever can actually be uh, pretty tricky in itself. So he might just feel more comfortable doing the turnip clip in general. But yeah, that's that's really unfortunate. Dangerous, unfortunately, just having some rough uh, mistakes. All right, Equan now entering Ruined Kingdom. And I like to think of this kingdom as the calm before the storm. It's sort of like a kingdom that I wouldn't call easy because there is there is actually a surprising amount of uh, skill that goes into optimally grabbing the swords out of this dragon's head. But it's definitely... Uh, less intense and less stressful than the kingdoms that are to come. So I like to think of Ruined as sort of the calm before Bowser's and Moon, which is the final kingdoms in the game. And Danger's finishing up Luncheon as well. So, yeah, like I said, even though Dangerous has uh, lost quite a bit of time in this race and is quite a bit far behind, this next Kingdom Bowser's that uh, is after Ruined is very difficult, so I definitely would not rule out a comeback here. But we will have to wait and see. I also think another good thing to uh, bring up here is uh, Pace, uh, the Little Speedrun Association's official speedrun event that is happening in Laurel, Maryland. You can use exclamation point. Pace in the chat for more information. Yes, you definitely won't want to miss that if you have an opportunity to go. It's sure to be a really fun event. So yeah, you can type exclamation point Pace like Chief Game said find out more information as uh, Ekwon f finishes up the dragon here. Yeah, I, I also will be attending Pace, so I will be seeing anyone there, or everyone there. That'd be exciting. Yeah, you definitely, it, it is a very good opportunity to meet a lot of speedrunners and a lot of people in the community. It's sure to be a really fun event, so definitely want to look into that. If you're able to attend, I highly recommend it, because it's sure to be a very fun event. So Aquan now will be making his way into Bowser's, which can be argued to be one of the harder kingdoms, not only because it's just hard in general, but also because it's at the end of the game and can be incredibly stressful. There's a lot of stressful things in Bowser's, and if you're in a race or on good pace, certainly uh, that stress from the race combined with the stress from playing the level definitely isn't going to help. So we'll just have to see. We'll have to see how these runners are able to perform under this, uh, under the pressure of the end of the race. And 
and Bowser's is another kingdom, like Metro, like Snow, uh, and especially Bowser's. It's Bowser's is probably, I'd say, one of the most linear kingdoms in this game, probably next to like Cap and Moon, in the sense that basically you can only complete it in one way. There's not really much routing on option here. As we see but that, as I we, say that, yeah, <laughs> oh, sorry. Going for, yeah, everyone going for the bird dream route here, which I'm pretty sure he might be the only one that goes for it. Yeah, uh, that's one thing. There's not much routing option in Bowser, but that's one thing you can do there, is do that bird dram instead of the crates. And interestingly enough, their crates and that bird dram are basically uh, tied in terms of speed. So it's pretty much just per personal preference, which one you want to do. I believe crates in BTT is slightly faster, but in RTA setting, they're pretty much the same exact speed. So it just comes down to whichever one you're more comfortable with. So yeah, you basically, the only way you can progress in Bowser Kingdom is to grab these story moons. So it's pretty linear, very little routing option. And moons that normally we would just skip because they're really slow, like the shards moon, we're just forced to get. So we have to come up with some cool optimizations here and that's the reason why i love bowser's and think it's one of my favorite kingdoms is because there's you have to, you have to be pretty creative when it comes to these like like shards especially here lots of creative movement and uh, creative optimizations that go into it in a in a moon that we would normally just skip yeah i think uh my favorite shot here in bowser's is at least for shards is definitely like the birdless final shard yeah, that's actually a, a strat that was found by Goryuya. There's a you can you can uh, get that last shard by walking in front of the Pokio and making him poke his nose at you, and then moving out of the way so he hits the boulder into the crate that has the shard in it, and it saves about a second. And I believe Goryuya is the only one that goes for that at this point. But it's a really cool strat. And now heading into the bunny fights. And what we see here is uh, Aquan going into first person mode. Uh, this was a strat that was found and popularized by Fur. S uh, by going into first person mode and lining up the camera and throwing your hat, you're allowing uh, Cappy to hit the bomb back at Harriet faster than normal if you weren't to do the camera, uh, first person camera strat. And this saves about a second over the whole fight, so it's quite a huge uh, time save if you're able to get it on all three phases, which Equan did there. Dangers making his way through Bowser's as well. Pretty clean so far. And something that uh, we didn't point out when Ekwon did it, but doing this Bowser Dram strat, where you basically spin pound, throw your hat, and then dive up on that cliff and grab the moon. Do a capture warp. And Ekwon grabbing this bunny's moon. So I think it's safe to say they're about to they're about a Harriet and Topper fight apart in terms of uh in terms of Ekwon's lead. And we see Dangerous opting to not do the first person Harriet strat. Probably a smart move if he's not consistent at it because missing it is quite a big time loss. So since Ekwon did the bird dram at the beginning, he's actually just going to skip over this crate moon. Take damage on that spiny. That's not a huge deal, though, because uh, uh, we're not going to be grabbing any more health refill moons. The only moons we'll be grabbing are the multi-moon, and that doesn't get a health refill animation. So... Uh, taking damage there isn't a huge deal. And now 
entering the mech fight. This is definitely probably the most stressful part of Bowser's. It's the final part of Bowser's and it's the, arguably the hardest boss fight in the run. Normally what you do is uh, wait for this guy to shoot a Pokio out, shoot bombs back at him and make him fall over so you can climb up on him and destroy these. Yeah, I think I think what he was trying to do there was go for Topper Acquired. Yeah. That's probably the newest addition into this next fight. Yeah. And he didn't get it there, but he did, luckily did not fall off, cause, so that could have ended way, way worse. He did lose a little bit of time by not getting it, but he didn't fall off, which is which would definitely have been the worst case scenario. So yeah, like I was saying, you're supposed to climb up this with the bird, but that's way too slow, so... Just, we just skipped the bird. No big deal. In dangers, as you see, he's getting this crates moon since he skipped the... Since he didn't do the bird jam. Pretty clean mech fight from, uh, from Ekwon. Obviously, with that mess up on top required, but he didn't fall off, which is good. And the rest of it was pretty solid. <laughs> and Danger is now making his way into the mech fight. Let's see. Good climb. Alright, good mech so far. It's really, particularly these last two hits that are pretty difficult. He's going for a strat here called Target Acquired, where you hit this Harriet bubble, and then dive, and then quickly dive onto this spirit bubble, which he did- oh, okay, that was- that was very smart- No! So he had a smart- he, he was thinking smart there, by not- tr since he- he knew he wasn't going to be able to get the target acquired, he, uh, he decided to just dive back onto the mech, but he then, uh, tried to hit Spirit's bubble, uh, trying to go as fast as he could, but unfortunately took a fall. He definitely had some smart thinking there by not trying to go for the target acquired, but unfortunately did fall off the mech anyway, which is very unfortunate to see. And we now see Ekwon making his way through Moon. Now, Dangerous chances are looking grimmer and grimmer, but we have seen uh, runs that look, races that look in the bag Ooh, Ooh! Something- Okay! This- I am actually pleasantly surprised to see this. I, I- I was not expecting to see him go for this. This is a new moon skip that was found. Like, a new way to do moon skip that is faster. I'm not sure how- how much faster it is. Uh, but that was- that, that was like- I was not expecting that. I did yeah. not think anyone went for that. Didn't that just recently get added to BTC? Yeah, very recently. So, oh no. Dang, Ekwon did mess up this hat grab though. This first Bowser hat grab. <laughs> I forgot what I was even saying. That was I was so taken taken by surprise by that new moon skip. I mean, it is Ekwon though, so... Yeah, he's true. It's always full of surprises. But, oh yeah, like I was saying, uh, we've seen races that look in the bag, uh, get lost in pillars at the very end, uh, by an invisible wall. So, you never want, you never want to say a race is over. Never, ever, ever. Like, 
believe but it does. Okay. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, I believe there was a race uh, not too long ago in this tournament where it was Ekwon versus Necro, and Necro definitely was in the position to lose, and I think Ekwon messed the beast up like two or three times in a row. Like, yeah, exactly. Really, so. so, yeah, never ever ever want to say a race is over, although danger chances are looking grimmer and grimmer here as we approach the end of the game. You never want to rule anything out. Now Ekwon entering the final stage of the game, the escape sequence. So, yeah, basically, this entire moon is falling apart, and you have to escape. And they, actually, I really like this part of the game because they did a really good job at making it super suspenseful. They made it seem like uh, the entire room was falling apart right before you and that you're just barely making it to the next section, when in reality, it's actually based on where you are in the escape sequence and not it's not on a specific timer so i actually think that's a really they did a good job at making this feel suspenseful and what we see okay ekwon going for a wall jump here there's a why? you can do a wall jump and he gets it <laughs> I oh, why? okay um so he was <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, so there, there is no way that saves more than like half a second. I don't even know. Like, <laughs> I mean, he got it. He didn't die. What? But he. T <laughs> yeah. That's just kind of the way Ekwon does his races. He just kind of goes for this, like, like the top required, and he just goes for this cool stuff that doesn't really save any time. But. Uh, you know, that's just his style of play, and sometimes it does work in his favor, where he's able to play really flashy, sometimes it doesn't. And finishing. And yeah. The clawing at this last block. Danger's making his way into the skate. Ekwon gonna be finishing out with a low 102. So still a really good race time. Definitely uh, nothing to sleep on. Very good race time still from Ekwon there. Despite the pretty notable mistakes uh, throughout the run, he was still able to finish off with a really solid time. So Dangerous will just be making his way into the 2D section. Let's see... Okay, he's able to get 2D skip. And make his way into pillars. We actually see in the top left of F1 screen there, a little... A little Equani Tide Pog. So any any anyone in the chat who subscribed to Equan, get your Equani Tide Pogs in the chat. And we just see dangers finishing out the pillars. And it's looking like he's gonna end with a low 104, uh, given that the rest of these pillars go well. Which is still a really respectable time. You know, it might look like a quote-unquote bad run due to the mistakes he made, like failing Japsy skip and stuff, but really, when you think about it, these times that these runners got, still very respectable and very good times. Although Ooh. it does look like Danger's struggling with this last pillar. Ooh. He's gonna have it's, to do some. Yeah, it's... <laughs> That very was scary. Yeah, it's very, if you mess up that pillar that badly, it's definitely very easy to die. There's, you don't have much room, room to work with there. Yeah. 
So yeah, finishing out with a low 104. Very good time. Still. And it's looking like we've got two boys in here for an interview. Hello. Hello. So, Equan, GG on the win. So, there was quite a few mistakes from both runners there uh, in those runs. Anything you guys want to talk about? Anything that you uh, wish in particular you would have practiced more beforehand? Equan? Uh, okay, I'll go first. Uh... <laughs> Uh, wooded pipes smile. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that death, that death in pipes. Yeah, it was uh, all because yeah. I, I did a spin pound. I don't usually do a spin pound there, but then it didn't actually pound, and I just spin jumped, and I was, I was confused after that. <laughs> yeah. And then the cycle was all messed up after I died, and I didn't know what to do either. So it was quite bad all around. Yeah. Also saw you go for topper acquired, which is something I don't actually see. Any runners do. And uh, uh, you. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna say the also the new uh, BTT Mooncave skip. Yeah. Yeah, that as well. Very interested. I was very surprised to see you go for that. I <laughs> mean, the top required isn't that bad, but there's like there's like a setup that you have to do before it. And, yeah. But the problem is I don't know how to spin pound. I just know how to spin jump, which we've learned from the other time <laughs> yeah. this run. But anyway. Yeah. Luckily, uh, you didn't actually fall off, Nick. You just kind of missed and had to yeah. reposition. Uh, I wanted to show off the moon skip. I don't think it's that bad. I think it could be used in RTA, but I, I, I went over to the stream. I saw it at a decent weight, so I decided that I would try to show it off, and I got it, so that was, that was nice. You also did uh, that wall, wall uh, jump in 2D section. Does that even save time? Uh, is that just... <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. I, all I know is Bowser did not want to cling onto the wall there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, Sam yeah. was also really bad in that run. Like, I hit the Goomba in Dram. I also messed up getting on the archway. I was like 20 seconds okay. or something. Speaking of sand, uh, what do you think about your sand dangers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you get dealt a bad hand. This was just not my run. Um, got a value dive in Wooded as well. So, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to roll with the punches, and the punches were hitting me right in the face today. So yeah. there's only so much you can really do. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, going out with a bang, I guess. Yeah, I mean, still, you know, at the end of the day, low 102, low 104, still really respectable times. Uh, Equan, GG on the win. Dangers unfortunately taking a loss, but still a pretty respectable time to finish out with. So thank you guys for coming out and racing. All right, thank you. Cheers. Yeah. All right. So thank you guys for watching this race. And uh, you'll you'll definitely want to stick around for the rest of this Any Percent League and the rest of today's GSA matches. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you guys later. Have a great rest of your night, guys.